Hi there, welcome to another uh, advent calendar of squeeze boxes um, and happy St Nicholas Day especially if you're in a part of the world where that's kind of the major seasonal celebration um, and uh, I have a particular link to that because uh, I went to a primary school that uh, did the full uh, St Nicholas celebrations as if we were in Belgium or Holland and in fact it's uh, through a twinning with um, a, set, a place called St Nicholas in Belgium uh, anyway, more of that later in the musical side of things. Um, the first of uh, the ones that I'm going to give you, uh, which is of an instrument that I bought in a, a fair old state that needs a lot of stuff doing to it. It's better than it was when I got it, but it's, it's not uh, ideal. Anyway, I'll show you what it is. And uh, this was made in Belgium um, by Felix Kaliwert, I think. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. Um, but uh, as you can see it's a, a bit of a different instrument to all the others that I've given you so far. It's still uh, ostensibly a melodeon. Uh, on the right hand uh, we have, um, I haven't even managed to work out exactly what pitch it was supposed to be in originally. It's uh, uh, obviously was uh, from a time before A440 was the standard pitch so I don't know whether it's gone up or down from there but uh, yeah we're in, um, we're in sort of A440 it equals 430 or 432 or something like that so it doesn't play in tune with anything else uh, and it's slightly out of tune with itself uh, as you'll hear anyway it's a two row instrument three voices on this right hand side but the real interest comes on the left hand side now you may have seen uh, an instrument with spoons on its bases uh, as the mechanism but this is the one with 10 spoons on its bases <laughs> i'll try and explain how how that works later on but basically it's more like a, um, a, a woodwind instrument like a, a clarinet or something like that the way the the, the mechanism works um, so all I can tell you is that uh, uh, these instruments are older than the 1930s honers that I've got so this is probably 1910s or 1920s um, and uh, uh, Felix Kaliawat uh, made instruments um, in in Belgium, but uh, I think what we'd really like to do is have a look inside. So here we are with the uh, Felix Kaliwert 10 spoon bass uh, Leppelbasse Melodeon, and uh, this is a very early instrument uh, for the um, of all the ones in my collection. So it's built a bit differently. It's a bit. Um, Again, like the Eric Martin, it's built a bit more like a one row. It's a more traditional build. So the first thing we'll notice is that there's no pins at all that attach um, the bellows to these frames of the box. And um, yeah, we'll see how that works out in a bit. Um, it says here, Felix Caliwert uh, Fabrication Accordion Lichtevelde Belgique. So Lichtervelde in Belgium. And um, right, we'll get in here. Oh, there's another little sign on the front. I don't know if you can see that the light's a bit too bright on it. Um, here it says Felix Kaliwert, uh, Fabrique d'Accordion, Lichtervelde. And it has a couple of seals on this bottom half, which you can't see because it's down this end. Um, and it says Diplome and has some uh, trademark things. Um, it's all a bit uh, Victorian really um, anyway it's not it's a bit later than that and with these six screws on the front here um, I can take this front half off and we'll see just how it attaches quite differently to any other. there's another three screws on the back behind the keyboard speed this up yeah all all flathead screws in this era no uh, cross heads uh, so you've got to be a bit careful with the screws just in case you uh, put them off. so there you go the whole fondo or soundboard comes free of the inside now we'll have a look at the left hand side in a minute right you can see in there these are the reeds um, Reed blocks are glued directly on to the uh, soundboard stroke fondo. There's uh, some of the trademark signs in there, 
stamps again. Uh, but uh, we've also got a little bit of writing here that I found earlier. I don't know if you can see that. But that says W A R C O I N G, I think. Wa Wa Kwang. Um, and uh, that is a town stroke village just uh, a few towns away from Lichtervelde where it was built. So I don't know uh, whether it's a surname or, uh, or what it is. So as you can see, the reeds here haven't been done up. So these are original or definitely very old um, valves, uh, quite rusty looking reeds. And you'll certainly uh, hear that when I start playing it. Um, uh, interesting to note that the the corrosion on the reed plates shows that they're not aluminium but typical for this period they're zinc plates and the little uh, if you can see them uh, the light's not good enough there we go there's a little o mark little circle on the bottom of some of the reed plates that is uh i think indicating um the reeds were made by a company called dix uh nice nice reeds for the time um and uh, there is a company making kind of reproduction Dix reeds now. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, I'll show you a little bit here. This uh, this piece of wood has been used as a patch and one of the very many things wrong with this box is that there's a crack all the way along the front of the soundboard. In fact, there's several cracks uh, which were leaking air quite a lot. I've put um, PVA glue over to make it a bit more airtight. But there's a little bit of print paper left on the front of this, meaning this probably came from a wooden toy or a box of something with a little picture on it. Um, as I say, it's always lovely to find what you find inside squeeze boxes. Uh, and the reed box, as you can see, sort of fan out at different angles from the middle to give, I suppose, to give a bit more access to them for tuning, given that you can't take the blocks off. I don't know. Could be an airflow thing as well. So I'll show you inside the left hand as well. So the left hand side comes off similarly. Okay, let's see what's going on in here. So here's the left hand. Now, look at that array of uh, reed blocks. <laughs> now, on the uh, on the reed side, I haven't done anything to it on this side either. Um, yes, look at the, the curling on that valve. So the, once they get to a certain age, the valve loses all its kind of nice softness and curls up because it's just made of leather um, some of the more modern ones are made of synthetic stuff but um, but again these nice zinc plated reeds uh, and I have had a little go at some of the notes that were in awful shape just so that it would play a little bit um, but as you can see the the way these uh, things link either through a, the growl box to these sets of reeds or going along the top, um, they correspond to these woodwind type keys that go straight into their bases and chords here. Um, so yeah, uh, some more lovely writing in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but uh, again it says W-A-R-C-O-I-N-G, Wa Kwang or Vo Kwang. Uh, and it's got the dates of uh, both world wars here as well but that's done in biro so i think presume that was a bit later that's done in a lovely hand the wa quang thing and there's a name in here which i can't quite make out it's heilman or looks like it looks like a german name heiselman anyway there you go that's uh that's the instrument oh i forgot to show you something on the right hand is um these pallets, uh, nice little touch. I think this is ivory. Um, had to clean them up after the stain, and uh, yeah, which means I, sh I shan't be sending it anywhere soon. Um, but uh, poor elephants, but uh, they're from at least a hundred years ago. Okay, let's get on and play it. Okay, well, uh, let's uh, have a look at the instrument in a bit more depth and see what it does. Um, I shall have to apologise for the way I'm holding it quite precarious. It literally has one strap bracket here on the back, uh, to which I've looped this camera, <laughs> my whole camera handle, um, uh, and it's not 
it's not the most balanced thing I've ever played. Um, it's obviously it's it's a it's a very big and heavy instrument. Its uh, proportions are very large. Let's go straight in on on the interesting side, the spoon bases, and uh, and have have a look at those. So uh, basically, there's there's two levels of these spoons. Um, I don't know if you can see, but uh, the outside ones. have reeds not in great condition and they are associated with the outer row on the right hand uh, and then inside that um, you have so if, let's pretend this is C because I think it is inside that you've got two little levers that are attached to these uh, sort of clarinet type uh, affairs so that would be G and D if it was if that was C, and then you've got A and E, um, and then going inside, which I think this is something like C F, um, that would be F if it was, and inside it you've got a B flat. And an E flat on the push, which is uh, what you'd have on a club model. Uh, so yes, those are those are your spoon bases, um, and they do have a, a rattly old sound. I think that's a mixture of it being old reeds, but also the way that the interface works is uh, it's got a very one row sound about it. So this right hand again, as I say, not entirely sure what the original tuning was supposed to be, but. Uh, um, uh, let's pretend it's CF. Um, on the inside row it has a thing called the Dutch reversal system and Dutch and Belgian instruments had this in their scale. Um, so the root of the note on the inside row is there and you'd normally expect to go push, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, like that and it, and it has the, the fifth um, the other way round. Not uh, which uh, means that uh, I shall have to do some uh, on on the fly <laughs> changing of how the instrument works. Um, anyway, I'm going to give you some St Nicholas tunes on it uh, to the best of my ability. Now I said I went to school uh, where we really did celebrate St Nicholas Day in a big way, and that's very unusual in the UK. Um, but we had. Uh, a, a person who played St Nicholas sort of with a big long white beard and all the bishop's robes would come in a carriage uh, pulled by two white horses and we'd line up the road where my primary school was to see these horses come and uh, welcome St Nicholas to the school and, and then we had the, the whole afternoon we spent in assembly and each class would uh, um, perform one of the legends of St Nicholas or uh, sing one of the uh, folk tunes uh, which I think our teachers translated into English from uh, Flemish and uh, yeah it was a it was a nice thing to be part of so actually before I knew many folk tunes I learned the St Nicholas tunes from a different country before so I'm going to try and remember them and play you a couple I can't even remember what they're called but they're some of the ones we did at our school <laughs> And I do apologise for the state of the reeds in this, it's not in tune. <laughs> There you go, Felix Kaliawert, um, also known uh, the the style of melodeon, known as a teen baser or lepel baser, 
Um, very rare to come by, uh, especially over here. So uh, it's one of those ones I've got because I was interested in what it was like and I couldn't tell just from a few pictures on the internet. That's one of the dangers of getting into squeeze boxes. Take a lesson. Um, okay, see you in the next one of these. Bye.